All right, if you're a wealthy person, you probably asked this question before, does leverage work? Well, let's do the math and find out what the answer is. The first scenario here, let's say that we're buying a piece of real estate for a million dollars. You have the ability to inject $1 million of equity or buy that property with cash. Cash flow on that property is $100,000. So our return on investment, it's very easy. It's our cash flow divided by whatever amount of injected equity that we bring to the deal, or in this case, a million. So we just divide 100,000 by a million dollars and we're gonna get 10%. Again, in a lot of cases, that's not a bad deal. But again, let's see if we use leverage and see what happens to the math. Same deal, we buy a property for a million dollars. We're borrowing this time $800,000 from a bank, which means we only inject $200,000 instead of a million. So our cash flow remains the same of $100,000. Our debt service on this $800,000 is going to be around 60 grand. Again, I know where interest rates are. Let's just say 60 for round numbers. So our net operating income now is only 40, which is 100,000 minus our debt service to equal $40,000. The return on investment is the same metric, cash flow divided by equity, and that equals 20%. So we can see that using leverage or borrowing someone else's money or using other people's money makes mathematical sense. We are earning 10% here with no leverage, and we're earning 20% here with leverage. Obviously, we're stepping up. Let's go one more scenario and see if maybe there's a way to increase our NOI, or at least our return on investment, by using an idea called infinite banking. Now, again, there's a lot of noise right now on the internet about how this works, how to structure them, but if we understand that leverage works, Let's do the math and see if maybe this strategy or this way of using a life insurance policy to inject money into a same deal will improve our returns. The same thing, a million dollar purchase, $800,000 of debt from a bank, similar to scenario two. The equity that we're injecting though is not coming from our bank account. It's coming from a policy loan. We're gonna borrow money from the insurance company at 4%. Now most people would say, why am I using why am I being charged 4% of interest to use my own money? You're not using your own money. You're borrowing the insurance company's money while your money, your $200,000, is sitting safely in a policy continuing to grow and earn uninterrupted compound interest. And not to mention that's tax-free. So let's go back. Cash flow is still $100,000. Our debt service is still the same of $60,000. But now we have to tack on this $8,000 because 4% of $200,000 is eight grand. So now we are paying interest on the $200,000 of eight grand total, a policy loan. So that means our net operating income is now $32,000. Now, the same metric return on investment is cash flow divided by equity. Now, you could even say this is an infinite return because we're actually not injecting any of our own equity. But I like to look at the thing that this is the cost of our capital of $8,000. So if we do the same metric as what we did on the first and second scenario, we're going to take 32, or our cash flow, $32,000, and divide it by our cost of capital or our equity of eight grand. That's going to increase our rate of return to 400%. You did nothing different, whether you had equity, whether you borrowed, or you're injecting equity from a policy loan. The difference is where the capital is coming from. When you are using life insurance to inject equity into a deal versus just taking cash from a bank account and buying a piece of real estate, you take your returns from 10% all the way up to 400 plus percent or even infinite if you would like to call it that. But this is the power of using leverage or using other people's money. If you're doing real estate transactions and you're not using a life insurance policy loan, you're simply leaving money on the table. Mathematically, this makes more sense. If you want to learn how you can purchase commercial real estate or at least become a real estate investor by using infinite banking or life insurance to inject capital into deals, click the link below in my bio to schedule a call and I'll show you how to get started.